Okay, welcome back. This is Ancient City of Athens, or the Lecture 2.3.1.A. <laughs> and A is for Athens, and B is for Sparta. And we're going to do Sparta later. We're going to look at Athens first. These are the two big cities that will impact um, Greece's um, ancient culture. And just looking at the picture, you can kind of see Athens was a well-to-do, build-up city that had a lot going on. And so we're going to kind of take you through it here in this lecture. So again, don't forget, write stuff down that's in blue. And you can always pause if I go too fast or write down questions if you want to ask me later on. You can. Um, so let's get started. And then after Athens, there's a exit ticket. And then um, after Sparta, there will be an exit ticket as well. So... All right, so what are we talking about? Athens, well, Athens is, of course, um, it's the capital today of Greece, and it's one of the cities you probably had, find, had to find on your map, um, which hopefully is uh, done by now. And when we look at the um, city of Athens that last, or two, two slides ago, you saw a big mountain, and on top of the mountain above Athens was this giant outcrop of buildings called the polis. And the polis was like the city center. And it had a lot of different things going on in it. It had a marketplace. It had a temple. Um, it had a giant statue of uh, Athena, Athena, which was uh, that's how Athens gets its name, is her. And she's like their patron goddess of the city. And you can see in the picture here, people would walk up to the top. And so this, this served as much as the same function uh, having a market, place to eat, hang out, worship the gods. It served pretty much as uh, all of these things. A place to worship, meet friends, market, government buildings, and so on. And so you'll want to jot that down so that you know. Um, while you're doing that, I'll just speak to the word poli. Uh, poli or polis, metropolis means city. The word poli means many. many. So uh, political, politics means the view of many people or uh, police means taking care of the people. So we get the word polis or poli from the Greeks and it's still something we find in uh, language today. So, all right, moving on, or if you need to pause it and write this stuff down, please do so because I'm gonna keep showing you more about the polis. On the polis, like I'd mentioned before, there was this giant statue of Athena. Now it's not there anymore. Um, Later on, it'll get taken, either knocked over or carried away. Um, there was a statue, though, in one of these other buildings I'm going to show you here in a minute. In the next slide, there was an inside statue, too. So here was the outside. This is what we think it looked like. These are carvings today or restorations. But And this was an artist's painting of inside, um, which we'll look at. And this was supposed to be a gold statue with ivory skin and jewels and stuff like that. So this would be a place that people would come and pray to Athena. Athena was the goddess of wisdom, and uh, she was kind of like a jack-of-all-trades. She could do everything well. She could fight well. She was smart. She was beautiful. Um, so Athena was kind of like the, the girl of the ancient world that everyone adored and, and prayed to. And, of course, it was their patron goddess. So... Um, the statue, here's another picture of it, a little smaller. That um, building that I'm showing you there, I'm pointing to it, this has a name, okay? And yeah, the whole thing's called the polis, but what's the name of this building? Well, this building is called the Parthenon, okay? And the Parthenon, as you can see, is a white pillared temple to Athena. And again, this was her city, and this is her temple on top of the mountain. And it was actually built after a great victory uh, over the Persians, which we'll look at probably ne into next week uh, when Persia shows up. Greece ends up fighting a bunch of battles, which I had you also find on your maps. But uh, anyway, you can kind of see what the polis would have looked like. And the Parthenon is, of course, something we're going to talk about here in a second. Now, if you look at the Parthenon today, this is all that's left of it. And you can kind of see the modern buildings down below. Um, notice the roof is gone. Um, it's withstood um, hundreds of years of earthquakes. It's been struck by lightning. The Turks actually used to store their gunpowder in there, and then one day it caught fire and blew the roof off. So the poor Parthenon's been rather beat up, and as is all the uh, um, 
polis, you can see the polis doesn't have much in terms of, Acropolis doesn't have much in terms of buildings anymore left. There is one, these are pillars. This is an act, uh, this thing here, here is a temple to Zeus, but I thought I'd just point it out. There are other temples in Athens, but, you know, it's the city is named after her. So what's what we're usually seeing is these scaffoldings um, trying to keep these things from sta you know, standing, or keeping them standing because they're one earthquake away from being knocked over and falling, and then no one will ever get to enjoy them again. Um, and you can see the Parthenon uh, from, from here, and of course um, there was that ramp you saw in the earlier picture where people still will walk up, up onto the hill above um, Athens to see it. Uh, looking down over the cliff, like if you're, like if you if you go over to this cliff and look where these people are and look straight down, uh, you would see this cliff and this is how high up you are. And call your attention to this horseshoe shape um, structure, uh, ruins, and you can see what it used to look like. It was this. Here's the horseshoe shape. This is the stage. Uh, the people would sit. And so the Greeks also invent theater. And next week I'll have you do an activity or a web quest with. Um, looking at some of the first um, plays and things like that that the Greeks play had. But getting back to the Parthenon, if you stare at the Parthenon, um, you'll notice a couple things. <clears throat> first of all, uh, yeah, you can see the roof's gone. Uh, it's pockmarked from pigeon holes, and you know it's obviously full of rubble and bricks and stuff that have fallen from numerous earthquakes. But it is still standing, barely, just the shell of it anyway. And if you look at it, um, there's a couple optical illusions. First of all, the base of the pillars are fat, and so when you look at the bottom, they're bigger than they are at the top. They're actually more narrow at the top, and that's because it's an optical illusion. When you stare at it, um, you see it as straight, because if it were built perfectly straight, it would look to the human eye awkward. So they kind of knew that. The other thing is that these stairs are not straight. They actually bend upward in the middle. It's like almost like an arch. Again, it was made so that when you look at it from a distance, it would look straight. So there's all kinds of like strange mathematical stuff going on with the Parthenon, and um, and of course there's there's all kinds of uh, theories as to why the Greeks did that. But if you look at it, it should probably remind you of a famous building that you know, which would be. Lincoln Memorial, right? If you've ever been to the Lincoln Monument down in Washington, D.C., it has the same architecture. And that's because when our founding fathers, Madison, Jefferson, and those guys, when they laid out the city of Washington, um, now this was built much later, but a lot of the architecture used in government buildings is copied from the Greeks. So we wanted to pay them tribute. We are not the first democracy. And so we copied the Greeks, and so we copied their architecture. So when you go to D.C., you would think, wow, it looks like I'm in ancient Greece. And that's because, you know, that was not done by mistake. That was us tipping our hats to the Greeks. And, uh, again, you can see the scaffolding. They're always fighting, you know, to keep this thing standing upright. And I'm told they're going to build a replica. And I'm also told there is a replica here in America, uh, I believe out in Memphis, Tennessee. So, I don't know. Um, it, I've never been there to see it, but I'm told it's pretty neat. And this would be the floor plan of how it's laid out with the different pillars. And inside would be the statue, uh, which you saw. And there's other side temples and uh, like little, like this one here is to Nike. Uh, Nike is the goddess of victory. And so she was known as like the um, person you would pray to, I guess, for, you know, athletics or whatnot. And she was like one of the handmaidens of Athena. So there's, there's all these other little side temples off the Acropolis. But um, I also wanted to mention uh, who this is. This guy is called Pericles. And some other things about Athens here. Uh, Athens invented democracy, so I already mentioned that, but I think you should jot it down so you remember it in your notes. And the guy who came up with the concept is this guy called Pericles. And like we we often say, like today, you know, we give George Washington credit for being our first president, and you know, and their forefathers. Obviously, they were more than just George Washington setting up democracy, but he's a figure that comes to mind. Well, when you talk about ancient Greece and democracy, Pericles is like their um, founder. 
for democracy. And another thing we get from the Greeks is trial by jury, the idea that you commit a crime and you are then going to be judged by you know a group of your peers. That is something we also get from the Greeks. And so, lo and behold, that is a picture from the U.S. Supreme Court building. But, uh, again, you would think you're in ancient Athens, right? So even our highest court of the land looks like a Greek Parthenon, okay? And each man got a chance to serve in the assembly. I'm sorry, girls. Uh, women were not allowed to serve in the assembly. It was assembly by lottery. Your names all got thrown in a bucket, and then they would draw names out at random, and you might even get chosen to serve. Um, uh, there were different types of um, magistrates and stuff. So uh, some people say this is a good or a bad system. I, I don't know. Uh, there's pros and cons to it. If you uh, think of our society today with our uh, politicians, some people think they're corrupt. Um, doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, there's a lot of corruption in Washington. And I think if you used a lottery system, you would not have career politicians. You would have just normal folks picked. But the downside of that is, what if like the village idiot gets picked and has to go off to Washington and make big decisions? That could be scary too. So, uh, sorry girls, you did not get a chance, but uh, that was something that only men could vote and serve, and women, in, in Athens anyway, had no rights. And you're going to see that's not true with Sparta. Like Spartan women, uh, they were pretty pretty rugged and tough and, and you know they had a lot more rights than say Athenian women were almost kept like pets and you wouldn't actually let a girl out in the streets of Athens unattended um, because something bad could happen and you always had a male escort or male chaperone uh, everywhere you went ladies because that, that's just to show you a difference between Athenian women and Spartan women which we'll look at uh, later on all right <clears throat> the last thing to touch on then Athens, when we talk about Sparta, you're going to see Sparta was like a land power, a land force. But Athens was a sea power. And Athens had the best boats of the ancient world. Uh, they had copied some of the Phoenician ideas. Uh, one of the things, this is called a trireme, trireme, or also a tri trireme, trireme. Um, they obviously had sails that they could sail, but they also had uh, oarmen, double sets of oars on either side so that they could row. Um, and they would have a guy hit the drum or whatever, and everybody would know when to row. And what's kind of neat was, in times of battle, they would pull down these sails, and then you would just get this thing up to running. And you can see this thing here in the middle. That's like a giant chisel, uh, a battering ram. And so once you got your, looks like a duck, <laughs> once you got your duck up to speed, you would bash into the other boat like this. You can see this guy breaking through this barge here or whatever. And of course, you know, they don't have the sails. They take their sails down because otherwise you could shoot flaming arrows and catch their sails on fire. But the whole idea was that the Athenians used these triremes and just crushed the ancient world. And that was kind of their claim to fame. And uh, they're a little meme here. So that's that's it for about Athens. Um, we'll look at Sparta next. So the, uh, go grab the exit ticket and finish off uh, Athens first, okay?